right, so um, now we're going to get into the meat of this video. We're going to talk about how this vanishing RC car was made, which was made by you. So when I first asked you about creating a vanishing point RC car, how did you go about selecting a proper one-tenth scale 1970 Dodge Challenger body? As far as I know, they've only got the two Challenger um, Lexan bodies out there. They've got the new Challenger, which is – it looks more like a one twelfth scale car. Uh -huh. I think it does classify as one tenth, and I forget who makes that one. But it's the modern Challenger, and it has the correct hood. And then there's the HPI body, which is the Challenger TA uh, 1970 car. And uh, basically those are your two bodies that you can use unless you get a hard shell. And the only hard shell I know of is the one-tenth scale – one by uh, who did that one? I forget. Oh, uh, a couple like, of those. The Jada. Jada, yeah. yeah. It's really good. It's really accurate, but it's the modern Challenger. So, I, I think those would be your three your three choices that you could you could pick from. Mm -hmm. And to me, it just seems obvious unless you're making a, a like a third in a in a series of v Vanishing Point movies that you'd want to pick the uh, Challenger TA by HPI. Oh, that's so true. And then the, the one that we picked, um, you went for a combination of, of the two bodies, yeah? Yeah. Uh, I remember asking you if you wanted it uh, with the uh, TA scoop or, or to do the RT hood. And uh, it's like, you know, it's possible to combine those two. And it seemed like a great idea at the time until I started doing it and then it turned into a lot of work, but... Oh, no. Sorry about that. Uh, oh, that's okay. No, uh, I was quite pleased with how it turned out. Uh, me too. Me too. All right. So uh, let's talk about the the chassis now. Uh, we basically took one of your pre-existing chassis from one of your Chuck Heston videos. Uh, can you tell us more about the chassis and uh, what kind of power it's bringing to the table? Uh, I believe that's uh, Tamea or Tamaya uh, TL01, uh -huh. I think, but it's an old one. Uh, all wheel drive and it had what you can do with it is you can, you can kind of alter the wheelbase by flipping the A arms around you can uh, make it slightly longer slightly shorter and I, I had that on an existing car and uh, for whatever reason I killed the electronics on it so I believe I put a 17 turn uh, brushed motor in that for you and uh, had a, a fairly decent speed controller that I, I stole from uh, another car <laughs> so it kind of got uh, Frankenstein together but uh, yeah you've got you've got a classic uh, a classic chassis there it should last quite a while and uh, it fits pretty well under that Challenger although I had to stretch the the track width of the rear wheels by widening the wheels so it would fit and look normal under the car. Yeah, a lot of work there. Oh yeah, yeah. I'm actually. Um, well, I'm gonna show the viewers the the pictures you did on that because, like, in the initial pictures, you can see that they weren't sticking out properly. But you fixed that somehow by adding more width to the uh, to the wheels as well, didn't you? Yeah. What I did was uh, I combined two wheels together so that we could uh, basically change the back spacing. Mm -hmm. on those on those rims there and uh, I've never done that before I'm kind of a fly by the seat of your pants kind of guy it's like I, I see a problem and uh, without buying different axles and A-arms for the chassis I figured this would be the, the quickest easiest way to do it and it, it worked perfect it worked really well yeah it really did um, do you remember what kind of uh, wheels you used like the specific name for it in case anyone's wondering, uh, you know what? Those were uh, just Mopar rally rims or Chrysler rally rims, and they're also by HPI. Mm -hmm. um, and they've got uh, narrow, I think, are twenty six millimeter, and they have wide, which are thirty one millimeters. Um, and just to keep the car looking more like the movie car, we put uh, we put the narrow wheel on there, uh, just so it looked a little bit more stock. We yeah. could probably put the wider wheels on there and we would have gained almost enough, but it still would have been too narrow. 
So I figured by shoving another wheel inside there, extending the hub, we uh, we solved that problem quite nicely. Yeah, it looks it looks damn good. It looks very fitting. Oh, thank you. Yeah. Um, and you also added some, uh, I think, some paint onto the the wheels as well. Was that is that true? Yes, that's true. Yeah, they come completely chrome. Yeah. And when when they're completely chrome, they look they look good, right? They're accurately uh, molded and everything, but they look um, they look more toy toy like. So you can easily just brush in some uh, black wash into all your low spots. Mm-hmm. Let that dry, and bang! It actually gives you some depth. And it looks far more real, as well as the center of the wheel isn't supposed to be chrome. It's supposed to be painted uh, like an argent, argent uh, metallic. Uh-huh. So I just painted that. You're left with uh, the chrome centers and uh, the chrome br- uh, chromed ring around the rim. And, uh, yeah, it makes it look really accurate, actually. Yeah, it really does. It looks just like the, uh, the movie's wheels on there. It's very happy. Cool. Yeah. All right. So, um, back to the body. Uh, you showed me pictures of you working on the hood. Um, you even showed like a cardboard cutout of the the hood area. So, how did you go about um making that hood fit onto the new body? You said it was a a lot of work. Yeah, it's quite a bit. Uh, the new Challenger body that we got the hood from is actually quite a bit shorter. Than the T or than than the HPI TA Challenger hood, uh-huh. so it was short by, geez, I think probably around five eighths of an inch or so. Um, so I had to make that piece. So your hood is made up out of two pieces, molded into where the other hood had been. So what you have to do is make a cardboard uh, template, draw it out, tape it on trace where you're going to cut, cut it out, and then set the other hood underneath it and sort of splice it in. And you only, you only get one choice or one chance there. And if you, uh, if you cut it too small, it's kind of ruined. So yeah, there's a lot of, uh, a lot of finicky stuff going on there. Once you start trying to cut that stuff, it's not just like cutting a piece of paper. It's, uh, it's kind of tense. <laughs> oh, yeah, I can imagine. Well, I appreciate you getting it right the first time. Yeah, yeah thank you. <laughs> yeah. All right. Um, um, we're seeing some pictures of the um, of the body post. Um, do, do you favor uh, magnets, the, the, the magnet system of mounting the body, or do you prefer the, uh, the body post system? It depends what you're going to do with the car. If you're going to use it mostly for display or you're going to be drifting um, – driving it fairly conservatively, I, I would go with the magnets just because they look nice and clean. But if you're into, uh, like if you're going to race it against other cars or jump it or crash it or you're a kind of a, a poor driver like myself, you're going <laughs> to put posts on there just so the body stays on the chassis. Otherwise, oh, it's going to just fly right off. Gotcha. Do you have any videos of that? Do I have videos of bodies flying off? Yeah, like a good uh, kit. I I have a hard body popping off. It's my Mad Max uh, RC Mustang Mosh or whatever I call it. Yeah. Oh, yeah, and, I remember that one. Yeah, I had magnets on the back and I had posts on the front. And the posts are holding the body on, but you can see in a couple of the shots that the, the body is flopping around in the back. The magnet just couldn't hold it. <laughs> That's a super powerful... Uh, Oh, I forget the name of those magnets. Uh, Neo. No, I forget. What the <laughs> Neo They're magnets. super powerful anyway. Yeah, that's awesome. And still not powerful enough, though. Gotcha. Well, it definitely looks great, though. All right. So um, now we're going to talk about how you painted the body and added the extra details. For someone who's ever painted a uh, like a Lexan body, what, like what are the challenges of, of painting one? Well, they're not actually not all that difficult. They most of the time they'll come with a masking kit, mm-hmm. so you mask out your windows from the inside, and as long as you make sure that it's rubbed down nicely around the edge, you don't have to worry about paint leaking in. The outside of the body will come with a uh, a film that you can peel off, so you don't even have to mask the outside of the body. 
Mm-hmm. And a car like yours, just painting a, a single color is is really easy. You you can buy several different makes of uh, Lexan or polycarbonate paint that's designed to stick to it. It dries really quick. It smells really bad. <laughs> it, you either do it in a, a ventilated room or outside on a non-windy day. Yeah. A uh, couple light coats gives you decent coverage. Um, there's tons of uh, sites that you can look at on YouTube that'll show you how to paint an RC body. And uh, they're fairly easy to do. That's amazing. Be- well, if you're starting to do complicated stuff, different colors, uh, stripes and whatnot, then it, it all comes down to the masking. Yeah. If you're tidy with the masking, anything's possible. And a, a really good uh, a good thing to know is uh, you can if you don't like the shiny look that you'll end up with from painting the inside of the body, mm-hmm. you can paint the outside of the body, and it'll come out looking a little bit more satin. So it'll have some shine. Some of them will come out kind of flat looking, but uh, that's also a possibility. It is a little bit more difficult painting inside the body to to get decent coverage. And if you want to do it from the outside, it's uh, it's worth experimenting on an old body. That sounds pretty cool. Uh, the sky's the limit. What you you know? What yeah. You... Exactly. Um, and some other details. Uh, you put the. Uh, the Colorado license plate on the the front and back, like in yep. the movie, uh, the seventy one version, it was Colorado. And I think in the ninety seven, it was New Mexico. Yeah, um, but we opted for Colorado, I, I guess, for aesthetic purposes. It, it looks a lot better, in, in my opinion. Yeah, well, I, well, I'm not, I'm not really uh, like I said. I like the second movie better. Actually, it's it's a better to me. It's a better movie, but uh, you know, you can't beat the original. So, I don't know. I, I just felt like we should be doing the original car instead of the, the remake car. But, uh, yeah, I, I, the license plate is, is totally famous, eh? Oh, yeah. It definitely, I mean, yeah, to me, I do like the 97 movie better, but I think the uh, the green Colorado plate looks a lot more distinctive compared to the uh, New Mexico, which kind of blends in. Yeah. Well, plus it's got a front plate in the, the remake movie. It only has the rear plate. Oh, that's true. But yeah, I was happy with that. Um, and how did you make those uh, license plates? Uh, that was that was probably one of the easiest things to do. Um, just go online, uh-huh. just Google the uh, the license plate. Just put vanishing point uh, license plate. Bang! Yeah. A whole bunch of pictures pictures will show up, and uh, you can print them out on uh, MacTac stickers. Okay. Although I work in a print shop, so it's really easy for me. I can get all that stuff done. <laughs> uh, if you got a home printer, you can buy some some crap at Staples or whatever, and off you go. It's just the sizing you might have some issues with. You got to get the size right. Gotcha. And um, back to the paint job, we almost stopped looking. I mean, we almost stopped uh, with the paint job when it was you know nice and uh, pristine looking. But then you recommended that we add some some wear and dirt to it. Yeah. To make it look dirty. Which which look do you personally prefer? The dirty look or the uh, clean look? Well, it's funny you ask. I actually like the uh, the dirty look better. Mm-hmm. I've got a couple of uh, the diecast cars from American Muscle. Yeah. The 118 scale ones, and I've got one of each, eh? And uh, the dirty one is definitely more interesting to me. And your body, when we received it, like fresh from shipping from – you ended up getting it from the UK, I believe. Oh, Yeah to like yeah. two or three weeks <laughs> yeah and when we finally got it it had been uh, squashed or something it had some uh, wrinkles because it had been damaged yeah thought well you know what that's perfect for the for the movie because the car runs into some heavy action and gets dinged up and whatnot so if it's already got some wrinkles in it why don't we just go a little bit further and uh, add some dirt too I think it's perfect yeah it definitely adds to the theme of it yeah, yeah. <laughs> Great thinking. Um, anyways, we're going to wrap this uh, this video up, but uh, I want to ask you one last question. Sure. Um, do you plan on making any more um, movie, TV, car, RC projects that you don't mind telling us about? Yes, I do. I... Uh-oh. <laughs> I, 
make I want to make a sequel to uh, to my my first movie there with Chuck. Uh huh. There's a uh, snowmobile action. Um, there's going to be the green Firebird in there. That'll be a it'll be sort of a Soylent Green meets Planet of the Apes uh, zombie stuff. Oh, you got some apes involved? Maybe. Nice. Maybe. I'm just trying to combine all my favorite '70s movies, and you know, have the General Lee in there. Maybe, uh, maybe a few other movie cars from back then too. That's awesome. Yeah, I definitely look forward to it. And I'm gonna link your awesome channel in the video description. All right, thank you. Yeah, and uh, well, I want to thank you so much for your time. Any uh, any closing thoughts? Uh, if you can watch Vanishing Point, watch it. It's a great movie. Hell yeah.